This is the Provoked Prawn, and this is the Epos B20. This is a streaming microphone from Epos, and one that's designed to give you high-quality capture over a USB-C connection on PC or PS4. This is an unboxing video and review to talk to you about this microphone. And for reference, before I even get started, I'm using the microphone on a boom arm to capture this voiceover so you can get an idea of the quality of what it's like. I'm also going to show you the other highlights and points of interest in it that include the software that comes with it that you can use for noise cancellation, noise gate, and adjustment of the sound settings. I have got some tweaks to that right now, but what I also want to cover are the potential issues with it. Now, when you get out of the box, you'll see a very nice looking microphone with an aluminium build quality and an interesting design. You'll see it has buttons and wheels on both sides. You've got a gain adjustment, a volume adjustment, a mic mute button, and the button to switch between the four polar patterns because like other USB mics, this offers cardioid, omnidirectional, stereo, and bi-directional pickup buttons. More on that in a bit. You'll see it also comes with its own desk stand, which is an interesting point of note, because you can use it on the desk. However, in order to get the most out of it, you are better off mounting it on a boom arm. And actually, the guidance says that you should get it 15 to 20 centimeters away from your mouth in order to capture your voice properly and also to put the gain low enough that you're reducing the amount of background noise and background noise is an issue with this microphone but i'll talk to you a bit more about that as we go on inside the box you'll also find a screw that attaches the mic itself to the stand and the USB-C cable. Now this is a plug and play microphone and it also has a mic monitoring 3.5mm jack on it so you can plug your 3.5mm headset into it and monitor the mic quite easily with that so that's obviously a bonus. You can use that to pass through audio from your PC so you can listen to your game through the microphone as well so it's fairly straightforward in terms of the setup, much like many other USB microphones, for example, Blue Yeti and HyperX's Quadcast mics, quite similar, but this one does certainly look like a good solid build quality with a really nice sort of design aesthetic to it as a sort of gun metal finish. Nice look and feel. It doesn't look cheap, and it isn't cheap either, it is quite expensive. But you are getting, as you can hear, a good capture quality. It certainly sounds quite rich, but it does require quite a few tweaks. And I'm going to show you those later on when I go into the software and what you have to do in Windows to get it sounding good. But it does come with a nice looking stand. And I do like the design of it because that sort of pole from the stand to the base of the mic allows you to move it into a variety of different positions. Now, as I said, this has different polar pickup patterns, so you can use it as a streamer talking into it, but you could also use it for podcasts and things like that with people sitting around it, and you have the different positions, so obviously that's a bonus. But they say that you talking into the front of the microphone is essentially talking into where the volume wheel and the mic mute button are, which is what I'm doing now, rather than into the top of it, or into the other side. So if you're using it in the cardioid pattern as you would for streaming or voiceovers like I'm doing, then you want to talk into that side of it and as I said, get it as close as you can as possible. I'm going to show you a sample of voice capture and background noise with it on the desk on this stand later on in the video, so stick with me for that. It does certainly look the part on the stand like this, but like a lot of other USB microphones, really you get the best sound when you get it up off the desk. Although that stand is quite solid and well built, I don't think it's going to do a great job of blocking out noise from bumps in the desk and things. There's no shock absorption here really. There's not a great deal of that. It doesn't offer that as such. So you really want to get it away from the desk if you can and away from your keyboard. Because one thing I found immediately when I set it up and started using it in Windows was that it was picking up the sound of my wife typing across the other side of the room and a lot of other sounds too. So as default, it does pick up a lot of background noise, unfortunately. The setup process though is really straightforward as you can imagine. It's a USB-C connection, as I said this will work with PC, Mac and PS4. So you put the USB-C connection into the device itself and the other end goes into your PC. 
There's a 3.5 mil jack on here, which normally I wouldn't bother with a great deal because I usually just use my headset to listen to the sound from there. And then I go through and finish off with the audio. But with this headset, you actually have to use that 3.5 mil connection if you want to use the software, which is a weird quirk of it. So you actually have to use the mic monitoring pass through if you want to be able to use the EPOS gaming software in the gaming suite in order to customize the audio settings. And it is worth doing because as I said, you have the ability in that software to have some voice enhancement, to adjust the side tone, to adjust the noise gate, to adjust noise cancellation, settings that you will need to make it sound good. Those are settings that I'm using now for this quality and it really does improve things. Here you can see the dial for switch between the various polar patterns. The one here that looks like an upside down heart is the cardioid pickup pattern, but as I said, you have those other ones. And you also have a mic mute button on the microphone. There's a little indicator that I'll show you in a minute, which lights up to let you know when it's muted as well. So you can get access to that. The volume wheel adjusts the volume of what you're hearing in the headset with the mic monitoring setup. And then there's a gain dial on the other side, which adjusts the pickup volume over the microphone. Ideally, you want to get the gain as low as possible because if it's too high, it just picks up all the surrounding and environmental noise. And it's a real nightmare to try and keep things quiet enough to focus on your voice. You don't want any distractions in your recording or your streaming. So you really need to make sure you're cutting down on that. Obviously, you can use the EPOS software. There are other options as well. I've done a video previously on the Elgato Wave 3 on how to eliminate background noise. Getting on a boom arm, getting it close to your mouth as possible is the first step to reducing that. Getting the gain down really helps. You can also use things like NVIDIA's broadcast software with the RTX voice that can help reduce it and there are other alternatives as well but certainly what you can see is a nice looking microphone it isn't a garish gamer one it's a very good quality looking microphone a premium finish to it also has some really good capture quality you can hear the sound of my voice it delivers a very good capture quality with up to 48 kilohertz 24 bit sample rate so it's able to capture a really good sound and a rich sound as well but it does unfortunately pick up a lot of background noise and i will demonstrate what that is like on the default settings in a minute now i'm going to demonstrate how to put it on the boom arm it comes with a standard thread so really straightforward to be able to put it on the boom arm on the stand, you saw me screw that into the stand earlier on, so you can unscrew it or just put it straight on the boom arm if you don't want to bother with the stand. And that thread just attaches to the boom arm. You can see this is a Rode PSA 1, so it just has a standard thread there and it easily connects in. The thing that's interesting then is because of the sort of pole that juts out of it, it sticks out a bit of a strange angle, but you can adjust it in all sorts of positions. All you need to do is to make sure that you get the volume and the mic mute button pointing towards you. So you've got that as your sort of place we're going to be talking into. But you can have the mic upside down if you want to, or you can turn it around into various different positions. You could get it jutting out from the side. It's really adjustable because of this. Obviously, the boom arm itself is quite adjustable in terms of where you position the sort of thread mounting. But with this flexibility in that mounting on the top as well, you can really move this mic around to get it into a position where it's going to be off camera or just out of the way but still close enough to your mouth to be able to pick up the sound and deliver a good capture quality for you so it's nice to actually have that design although i will say as you can see from this shot it does stick out quite far from the boom arm itself which is fairly unusual in terms of setup but it's not a problem necessarily as long as you've got your pc quite close because i feel like the cable might not be that long However, it is a USB-C cable, so if you need to, you could probably purchase another one. It isn't short, don't get me wrong, but I did find that it wasn't mega long either. And here we are with EPOS's Gaming Suite software. I'll demonstrate a few different things with this, but before I get started, I want to show you the quirk of it, which makes it a bit odd. This software is potentially really useful because there's a number of different settings that you can adjust on the microphone to improve the capture quality. And I'm actually using those at the moment 
but it does have one strong caveat and that's that you need both output and input on your PC to be set to the mic. So you can see speakers EPOS B20, microphone EPOS B20, that's on the input and the output. I'm running a 3.5mm headset from the microphone so I'm getting my audio through the mic and into the headset. Obviously if you have a USB headset you can't do this so this is a potential problem. The other issue with this is let's say I adjust it to be my usual headset, the Astro A50, you'll see that now this says EPOS gaming device is not the default device and it refuses to give you access to the other options. So now if I want to use a USB headset and the microphone, so without any monitoring, I can't then use the software to make the customization changes which is fairly daft, I think. So you're forced to use this change in order to be able to access these settings. If that's something you're not bothered about, if you don't mind plugging a 3.5 mil cable into the microphone, then that's not potentially an issue. And what it does is it gives you access to a variety of different settings. You can see that you have sound on the left hand side. So this is what you're gonna hear in your headset. And it actually has a virtual surround sound offering. You can either have stereo or 7.1 virtual surround sound from mic so through into your headset. And you can change the equalizer settings and adjust things here to customize that sound. Obviously the main most important thing though is the changes to the microphone that you can make here. And you can see the changes that I've got in place. So I currently have it set to a warm voice enhancer, for example. So if I turn that off, you should be able to hear some of that difference. You can also adjust the gain. You'll notice I've got it at about 50% at the moment. That is actually probably too high. It's very close to my mouth. I've got the microphone right up to my face, essentially. And it's still picking up a bit of background noise. If I'm quiet, I can see the levels being picked up. You can see this movement over here on this side. That's simply the noise of my fans in the background. I can see that on the levels in OBS and I can see it here. Obviously that is not a good thing. So I could potentially drop the gain down a bit more that might help with that. And now you can see that you can't hear me as well. And I can't hear myself as well, but it's not picking up the background noise as much. I'm going to adjust this back up and show you some of the other settings. You'll see there's a noise gate option. So it's currently set to naught, but we could change this and tweak this around. And doing that then blocks out a bit of that external noise. If I turn it all the way up, You'll see these levels are now not being picked up at all. You'll notice they're grayed out and actually in OBS it's also showing the same thing. And I want to quickly demonstrate that because I think it shows an interesting point. So if I drag OBS over here, and this is what I'm recording with at the moment, you'll see the mic levels are at the bottom of the screen. If I just be quiet for a minute, you'll see them drop off completely. But if I turn the noise gate all the way off, you can see that those levels are still there at the very bottom. This is obviously not ideal because it means that you have a lot of background noise being picked up by the mic, but you can tweak some of this. There's also a noise cancellation setting and you can adjust this too. Tweaking this too much though can lead to some problems with the quality of your voice capture. So I'm gonna type while I've got these settings on. I'm gonna put them all up to maximum just so you can see what the quality of my voice is like while I'm typing. Hello, this is... Uh, uh, that's probably not as bad as if I turn these all the way down to nothing and do it again 
this is the provoke prawn and this is things that I've noticed is that if I'm bang on the desk you can hear that being picked up in the mic and that is through the boom arm as well so even off the desk it is picking up a fair amount of background noise but now I want to demonstrate the differences when you set it on the desk and you use it there instead because that's obviously going to be a very different experience so now, as you can see, I've got it on the desk. And what I want to demonstrate is that I also have changed the output device to be another audio source and therefore removed the microphone from the EPOS gaming suite. And also I'm going to just close that down because what I wanted to do is demonstrate the standard capture quality of the microphone out of the box without the software running and just how much background noise that picks up. What you'll see is that I am quite quiet at this range. If I go into the sound settings, the sound control panel, we can change the levels on the microphone. And you can see it's set at 58 at the moment, which is the gain that's on the mic. So if I turn up the gain, that's now quite high. It'll probably show me here. No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's just put this up to 100. And now you can hear a lot more background noise. You can hear me more clearly, but what you also be able to hear is a lot of noise. You can obviously hear a lot of keyboard noise. Uh, the microphone is behind the keyboard. I can move it closer to me and I could aim it up so that the mic, front of the mic is positioned towards me and then the keyboard is behind it. But even then it's still picking up a lot of background noise. So what you really need to do is to get it close to you and turn the gain down and then be able to just do that. And you can see now it's not really picking up anywhere near as much of the noise of the keyboard and this is a quite quiet keyboard as well and so it's a real shame that it picks up so much background noise but it's basically essential that you get it on the boom arm and also that you use the software because that can make a big change to capture quality and I think it's important to demonstrate this because if you've just got it out of the box as this setup you might think this is terrible, it's awful, I can't use it, and hopefully these suggestions will improve things for you. Overall though, a nice microphone with some pretty good capture quality, it just needs a lot of tweaking to get sounding perfect. Hope you found this video useful, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.